Okay. All right. All right. It's 4:30. I think I hit it right on the dot. Yep. Good. You don't have, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Vatsal sitting beside me. This is going to be, you know, casual. This is the first one that I'm doing. And uh, you no, know, it's 2021 coming up, and we're always trying to build these habits. And one thing I've always found is like, we're, you know, setting a habit up for a day to start doesn't make sense. It's like start as soon as you can and as you've made that resolution. So I'm here today um, trying to do this first little stream. I'm not going to be um, sharing it out like I will be in the future. What I want to be able to do is, you know, uh, go live, automatically push to LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, whatever. Um, sort of like, hey, here I am live. And then I've got a Zoom that I don't have running right now. Actually, I think I should almost hook it up because it's in this YouTube channel. Um, and if anyone wants, they can actually join in on the stream. I'll somehow, I believe what I'm going to do is just like screen share the uh, the Zoom. And um, anyone, we can, you know, talk, answer questions, really have no idea who those people are going to be. Sometimes I'm going to reach out and actually invite people. And other times I'm going to um, hopefully just have some people just just jump in. I have a couple different uh, things that I wanted to go through. This is the first one again. Um, so this is pretty cool. This is the, you know, this is actually, of course, you know, part of what I want to be talking about is, is speak and what we're working on at speak. And this is actually how I'm writing, um, text notes and, and actually preparing for this live show. So this was actually really helpful for me. And what I did was just put a couple notes in about what I wanted to talk about and go through. And then what's really fascinating is um, using the insights, you know, using the analysis, it will automatically then populate those insights on the right. So I've got obviously the notes I can read in the sentences, but it's really cool high level to see some of the brands, the dates, uh, the drugs, the psilocybin mentioned, people, nationalities, the geographic region and everything. And that's just automatically extracted out of the the note that, uh, that I've written. Um, I guess the first thing that I wanted to touch about, I'm just going to go through these notes in order. Uh, you know, there are some things that I've got to think of. So one of the things I'm doing is like this incognito tab and just, you know, making sure that sharing the right information, sharing everything and trying to manage a lot <laughs> on, at the same time on the go here. I can see I've got a little speak icon beside my face right now, um, even in the YouTube channel. So things to optimize that I'm going to be, you know, trying to handle pretty quickly and learn on the fly um, as we go. But one of the things that I wanted to talk about, and this one is, uh, uh, you know, a pretty, um, you know, devastating event. So Sherry Bessie Eckert, uh, I have only really had the honor to connect with her through LinkedIn um, and, and send some messages back and forth. But anyone who has been, you know, part of the psychedelic movement, um, fostering this, you know, that is, uh, this is a person who's made a significant impact. So as she, you know, sort of um, has in her, in, her, in her profile here and then in the note was sort of the architect behind um, Oregon's um, Measure 109, which actually legalized psilocybin therapy and was a huge um, win for the movement. And there was a lot of, a lot of support for it. And, you know, just a month after years of work to actually do this. She, she tragically uh, passed away and sort of sent, um, you know, shockwaves through uh, the the community. And, you know, I just wanted to take a moment just to, you know, honor her, uh, all the work that was done there um, and just, you know, uh, say, you know, just send my condolences to anyone who um, has been connected with her because she was such a beacon. Um, and uh, just a very tragic loss after um, all the all the all the work that she's done, and and finally starting to see some of the fruits bear from from all of that work and everything that uh, that her and her husband had done, and then the whole community down there. So that's a tough note to start on, but um, one that I just thought was really important. So so thank you, Sherry, and uh, you know very. Um, very sad to see you go, but thank you for everything. And there's a lot of people carrying on your vision and, and, and your mission there. Um, and that brings, I guess, to, uh, you know, what is this uh, end of end of year? Um, and, and I guess this a little bit of an opportunity for a reflection and, um, 
and and this year was i mean this year was a, a tough year for a lot of people and I, what i did was sort of i like to I, sometimes i like to speak but a lot of times i actually think it's you know really powerful to write things down um and so i actually put this um as a post and you know what am i grateful for in 2020 um and again not really the ideal uh, a lot of people businesses, nonprofits have felt um, the effects of this pandemic. And uh, we've lost a lot of amazing people uh, in the world this year. So um, as you we sort of work through that and try to reflect on the year, it can be really easy to get sort of lost in, in, those, in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in that pain and in the suffering. But we also need to, um, you know, work hard to remember that there were still good things that actually happened. There were still good things that took place. And that's what I spent some time on over the weekend when I was, you know, first of all, with my family and had that opportunity and privilege, which not everyone um, gets to do. But, um, you know, just take some time to actually think about this. And uh, so for myself, I wrote just a little bit about what I was, um, you know, grateful for. And, you know, it was an interesting year for us, too. Like I I moved to Toronto on January 15th, uh, you know, a couple weeks after that, you know, financial move. uh, emotional, physical, um, you know, a lot of investment in actually doing that. And, and then, you know, the, the city just turned into a ghost town and, you know, all these sort of ambitions and visions that we had of coming to the, t- to the city, meet up events and connecting with the community, both personally and professionally really vanished. And, um, and, you know, I'm still sitting in Toronto right now, but it's a, definitely a different Toronto than I actually uh, imagined or, or expected. Um, but, you know, just wanted to share a little bit and this link I'll, I'll, I can include out after, but just some of the things that I actually am grateful for. And that is a great, a great group of people to actually work with. And this makes a big difference, especially when you're not always connected in person. I'm luckily uh, enough and privileged to live with Vatsal here. Um, and he, you know, wish me luck at the start of this, but um, you know, having a good group of people to work with throughout this time and not just work, but talk and, and just navigate through everything that's happened this year has been uh, a relief and a pleasure and an honor. So, you know, very thankful for the team that, you know, there and, um, you know, moving to Toronto, although I do have some frustrations about it sometimes, uh, has also been an amazing blessing. And I've learned so much about the city, about the world and about myself from, uh, you know, being in Cabbage Town downtown or just outside of downtown. And this is a picture of the Allen's Gardens um, to Harbor Front um, during the summer and being able to spend all the time down at the water uh, and really just find a sense of peace. And even though so much isolation and working from from the apartment there, seeing people out and about and enjoying nature and enjoying the water, that was that was a beautiful opportunity. And now being close to uh, Casa Loma uh, in Toronto and having some great places to walk and some lights and, uh, you know, one of my favorite spots where actually a team went to when we had our little retreat, um, a beautiful view of Toronto from there. Family and friends, of course, uh, you know, that that's, that's been a big part of, uh, of what I'm grateful for this year. And one of the things that really scared me before leaving to Toronto was something, I was scared that something bad was going to happen. And, you know, um, it was, it was difficult. My, my grandmother, who I, I love very much, um, she was or really my second mother. She, you know, was diagnosed with cancer this year and she, she's doing okay. She's going through chemo. She got her treatment successfully. Um, but to be away from her, um, was a difficult experience. And, and, and what I'm grateful for is to have the opportunity to still see her, to go and, and be able to visit her and to know that even through all this, she's as, as bright and lively as she actually can be. Understanding of the self, love, challenging or not, you know, um, these, you know, love is, is such an important thing in our lives. And, and uh, I'm so glad to have had that experience in, in 2020. And I, I just added to that, like, you know, a different a new understanding of, of myself. And, um, you know, pandemic changed a lot of things for a lot of people. And one of the things that gave me perspective was, was, you know, I was just running through Toronto, meeting everyone and trying to network and connect with everyone. And as lockdown sort of came in, it was this uh, opportunity to sort of just slow things down and, and, and re-meet and reconnect with myself and, and realize that was very frantic. That was a lot of energy that was being spent, a lot of stimulation. And to then have the moment to, you know, wake up in the morning, not have to rush anywhere, have the opportunity to exercise, some tea, some instance, some instrumental music. That was a, a beautiful thing and, and something I'm so uh, grateful for. And now something that's sacred that I can actually bring into 2021. 
a couple of last things from this note and then I'll jump on to the next point which is like the psychedelic community had just a mon- monumental year from the work that Sherry and, and everyone did in Oregon to um, to Theracell and getting end of life terminal anxiety, uh, terminal cancer patients um, treated with psilocybin and then non-terminal cancer patients and then doctors and physicians what an amazing leap in, in destigmatization and uh, opening up the consciousness to the world to the, the possibilities of these alternative ways to treat um, depression, mental illness, but more than that, just be the best versions of ourselves. So um, I'm very grateful for that. And it seems like with everything going on in the world that this will sort of continue. And, and I, I hope that it does. And I hope that I can continue to try to contribute the best the best way that I know how. Couple things, just rapid fire. Vancouver went for the first time ever. It's just as great as everyone says. Um, NRC IRAP, which is an amazing organization that funds innovation in Canada, was able to um, help us with a project. And that was a huge moment for us to invest more R&D and to speak. Very grateful for that opportunity. Um, we had over 500 people actually sign up on Speak by the end of the year. And uh, that's a small village. That's a small group of people. So I'm very, very excited and happy about that. Speak, the actual technology that we've built has been able to be, like I've been able to see other people benefit from it. And I've also had these breakthrough moments for myself through this technology and through this lens of like self-reflection and analysis and connecting the patterns of all the media that you're creating. And that's just been an honor, something I'm so grateful for. We did an interview uh, with uh, with Y Combinator, and you know, several years ago, when I first heard about Y Combinator, it was just this dream, something that I just thought was, you know, completely unachievable. And here we were this year, uh, actually doing an interview, and we didn't get accepted, but it was a moment that uh, we had actually just a year earlier said that we had wanted to achieve, and literally a day. A year later on the exact day, we actually got asked to interview for Y Combinator. We did a lot of work to prepare for it. We did a good job in the interview. There was things to learn, things to grow from that, but it was really a beautiful moment and one that I'm so grateful for. Uh, and just to add to that, like we actually made money from software this year, something that we built that was just this idea evolved into something that people actually valued and cherished and were willing to pay for. Uh, and that's just, you know, from a couple of years ago, um, that was something so surprising. It's just something I never expected. So can't believe that that's actually coming true. I hope that that continues in 2021. And these were huge milestones for me. Um, and lastly, just, you know, I, I survived. Many of us, you know, sadly, we didn't actually get this privilege. There's been a lot of people who have been affected by this pandemic and lost people that, that they've loved and cared about. And thinking about all of you as we sort of wrap up this year, this year is done and it's not like not like it's just going to have this fresh start uh but um i ho- hope that there is some peace that you can have as we do transition into a new year with a new energy um that there's opportunities for us all to be grateful for things even with how difficult the year um actually actually was i did want to take a moment here as well too. Um, this was just, uh, I've not done this post, but I just a love letter to Thera. So I mentioned them in that last piece there, but just thank you for all the incredible work you've done. You know, you've given me, uh, I struggled because I was working with a bunch of nonprofits and um, I was doing my best to make an impact, but I felt like I didn't have the resources or they didn't have the resources to like make this significant change. Even though I had seen it at Innovation Works, the co-working community space I had worked at, um, it just seemed like you needed more resources. You needed more funding. You needed business acumen, all these things. And I think I I, I diluted myself a lot with that. And what Theracell proved to me this year is that you don't need to have all of this. If you have a concentrated effort, passion, love for what you're doing, you can accomplish a lot. And uh, I'm going to write a little bit more and share this out. But um, they've done some incredible work this year pushing through psilocybin therapy, um, you know, said f- first made illegal in 1974. So the first time people have actually had access to this. Uh, and, and it's really, it's, it's changing lives already and it's going to continue to change. Um, one of the things that I just loved, just as a note, was this sort of guerrilla marketing style that the uh, <laughs> tactics that they had. So they found this 
wonderful woman, Patty Haju, the health minister of Canada, and realized that she was one of the people, uh, she was the person who could make these exemptions. And so they would lobby her, basically. They would send tweets. They would get videos of physicians. They get uh, videos of patients, tag her. Sometimes I felt bad for her, but <laughs> it was so effective. It worked. And, um, and they just made a significant impact in Canada uh, and not just Canada, but the world because of that. Uh, that effort. So I'm very grateful. Right now, they do have this fundraiser that's live. Uh, every donation is matched up to 250,000. 250, Can I click this and open it? Yes, up to 80,000 today. Yes, great. I'm really happy to see that. So if you have the ability, um, this can make a, a big difference in people's lives and Canada's life and uh, I think lives across the entire world. So just wanted to share a little bit, uh, a little bit about them. Uh, this is now, now I'm going back to, to speak. Um, one of the challenges that we've had uh, this year has been like, what do we do? How do we explain this? And um, did a lot of work to try to navigate through that. We had all these different people sort of flow into our, our platform this year. People ask us how we could help them or what we could do. And um, we've made a lot of progress and we learned a lot. There's still a lot more work to do. But one of the things that just happened over the weekend as I was sort of taking some time was just a little bit of um, doing an update, trying to uh, frame what we're doing a little bit better and try to make it a little bit more clear. And so I just wanted to do a quick share through this about no, our offerings, what we're actually doing, trying to make this again, just very um, simple and, and, and understood. And there was moments, uh, especially and as we you know, had this Y Combinator interview and things where I was really struggling and challenged to avoid doing, for example, some of the consulting or custom implementations, looking for this like raw um, win in terms of software subscriptions. But really, you know, it's about creating value for people and solving a problem. And that's why we're, we're moving much towards to being a solution instead of a tool and, and really trying to figure that out. So if you have any ideas around that, want to connect or you're trying to solve problems with media, trying to use media for growth, please reach out and, and let us know. We're not as restricted to, you know, just the software. And the software is amazing, but we're willing to build integrations, connections, sort of customize the solution so it becomes a very valuable um, asset for your organization. So it's just something that we're thinking about now there. A little bit more focus on the, the security and compliance that we've actually spent a lot of time and energy and, and resources on this year. And then, you know, trying to articulate a little bit about what we actually do. So capture, analyze, share, optimize. These are the things that, that we actually do, breaking it down and showing what's what's in each one of those. So we're spending some time on that, getting some more of testimonials and, and people who have enjoyed using our platform and just showing that there is, a, there is a lot of love, there's a lot of potential and people are already seeing that, using it and willing to pay for it. That's been a, a huge jump for us year, this year, very exciting. Also, one of the things I just thought was just like, we see so many like companies and websites and like some of them just don't feel that human. It's like, who is building this? So just wanted to share that a little bit. We got a great picture from our team, this uh, from their little retreat that we did and then share a little bit about us and you can tap on any of these icons if you wanna connect and learn more as well as we put out this open call for support. Uh, frequently asked questions as well too. This is one of my favorite things on websites and just I think if you're building a website, you're trying to optimize, I think there's something really powerful about this because First of all, it shows that people are asking you these questions. We've been asked these questions over and over again. And so we've actually created answers. Um, and now, you know, people can navigate through this. They can look and they can say, oh, what am I actually um, interested in? So people are saying, you know, why are you building Speak AI? We have answers to that. What is your business model? Now people can click and open, sort of self-serve and get what they want. And the benefit of this that is actually um, creates people spending more time on the page, but also helps search engine rankings as well too. So if they ask who are your customers, we've got some great examples with links. We've got some some sort of tags that people are actually looking for and even job titles. So that really helps from, a, from an SEO perspective. And just to close this, just trying to make it nice and clean and, and a way for people to navigate. So we've seen people spend more time on the page. If you have any insights, any thoughts on this or how we could make what we're doing a little more clear, we are very, very open to this and, and, and would absolutely love to hear. Okay, where am I on this baby? I'm already 19 minutes in. I'm gonna have some clips from here. Um, that's that. There we're going. We're getting through. Uh, this is now. Now this is ambitious. One second here. I muted so you didn't have to hear me. Me, me chug that drink. Um, 
I don't think I was perfect though. I'm still working on a couple things. So this is like one of the goals. I wrote this on August 17th and started trying to manifest this. And uh, I love this idea of manifestation. Um, but how how could I actually make a million dollars in revenue in 2021? This is something that I've been asking myself. I think I've been asking myself this for many years, but really I think slowly putting myself into a place to actually make something like this real. And um, what I went and wrote through this post was just a couple things that I'm trying to think about around expenses, how to do it, ways to generate capital to actually unlock this. Questioning why do I even want to do this? What is the goal? What is the the you know the the drive and the motivation of actually doing this? And for many things, it's it's actually trying to keep independence. It's trying to uh, you know protect the growth and try to grow reasonably and sustainably and actually make a positive impact in the world. I think if I could figure this out in the right way, um, it's going to be very exciting to do it in a way that I don't necessarily have to dilute the company or or take this you know uh, venture path or or you know crazy growth that actually comes with that and sometimes the compromises that actually come along with it. So um, just wrote some stuff around how I'm actually needing to do that. How you know how is this actually going to be possible? What do I need to change? Am I you know where am I wasting time? How am I actually doing it? How can we? you know, take this foundation that we've actually laid and built and actually turn that into something that people value and want to pay for. And then we can have this scalable, repeatable customer acquisition. So this was a, you know, article, I think this is a focus point on my LinkedIn summary right now as well too. And really um, it might seem like a lofty ambitious goal, but I think, you know, that it's, it's good to aim high. It's good to have big aspirations. And even if you don't hit them, you know, at least you tried and, and you got closer than if you had never even set those goals. So I just set a couple things up here. If you want, check out this post and I'll share all the links. A couple last things and then I'm gonna wrap this up. This is the, um, this Canadian funding programs that I spent a little bit of time on our team here, which was asking, you know, what are all the programs available right now? How can we actually get this funding? And, um, you know, spent a lot of time actually actually building this out now if i'm trying to figure out i think there's a little bit of structuring to do and I, again i can see my faces here is in the, the the icon so maybe i should move over a little bit to actually i'll just pop it over here a little bit um that we actually go and build this in a way that I can share it and give you guys access to it. Because I think these are some great resources in here that if you are a Canadian company and you're checking this out, um, there's some great links. We found out you know, the sources and then all the links so you can check out these programs and maybe there's some opportunities for funding for you that would be you know, valuable and spent a lot of time doing that. Just seems so, uh, like so much work just to keep to ourselves. So if you are interested, uh, I will somehow generate a link, send me a, send me a message and I'll share this out. A couple of the other things that I just was wanted to wrap up was, if I can get here, was one of the posts that I guess I wrote today was just like, what am I actually trying, you know, how am I optimizing in 2021? And I, again, always sort of have this, uh, you know, this drive to do this. So one of those was email filters, um, actually, you know, even showed out for myself and for anyone else who's like, how do I actually uh, filter out these emails um, better? Uh, set a couple ways to do that. The big one that I, I sort of mentioned in this article, at least the big one for me, was changing this Calendly. And so in the past, I had been blocking out time because I had wanted to, I wanted to get this time of deep work in and, and really block out distractions. And I was having these great meetings, talking to someone, but they weren't you know, just talking to amazing people, but not necessarily helping us progress, or maybe it wasn't necessary, or, or maybe there wasn't necessarily the, the alignment there. And instead of blocking out time. I wanted to open up time, but I wanted to make it more, um, you know, valuable for other people and then valuable for me as well as make sure that the people that I'm spending that time with, um, and that we're spending that time with are, you know, have, um, I have the ambition to move forward and are valuing each other's time. And so I have got a normal speak demo. You can book in the Calendly and a lot more time open. I think I've put a little bit of it, like, you know, a couple hours, I think three hours in advance, but you can book and, you know, just asking a couple questions so that I know if we are jumping into this demo that I have, uh, you know, enough knowledge to actually provide value and there's some alignment and we can make sure that we have a nice, great meeting that's valuable for all of us. And then on the actual consult side, what I set up, say you want to meet for an hour, again, I've left it very open, 
but this year I'm really being a little bit more rigid with my time. And so I've actually um, added a price point on this. And this is a general sort of rate that, that we charge here um, as a company. And I believe is, is, is valuable. I know I can produce way more value than that if you give me a whole hour and you set me up with those things. Um, but that's how I'm actually scheduling events and sort of optimizing my life this year. People can come book. I'm very happy to chat. If you do want to message me, you know, send me an email, send me a message on LinkedIn and I will definitely respond and we can try to figure something out, but really safeguarding my time and knowing how much I'm actually capable of accomplishing in 30 minutes, in an hour, and really trying to protect myself and the deep work ability that's actually possible there. Just a couple last things, deleting apps, blocking phone notifications, all these wonderful things that, uh, you know, are really, I, I hadn't even hadn't even realized, but are just sucking up this energy um, and just sort of creating overstimulation in my mind, whether that is the emails, whether that's actually the phone applications itself. And um, and so doing that through digital well-being settings application on um, on the Android app, iPhone has some great abilities for this and some Androids have a dedicated app you can actually get. So check that out. And if you can, just try to limit these actually deleted Reddit Twitter and Facebook. Uh, the, I have Messenger, but the Facebook off my phone, uh, which has been a big jump. And I found myself in the morning waking up and tapping and doing these things. And I just don't want to do that anymore. So um, today was the first one. I'm in withdrawal, but uh, I feel better already. And I will figure this out. I will continue and shame me if you see that I have <laughs> Reddit or Facebook or anything back on my phone. Back on my phone couple last things, just earlier wake ups, you know, in, in 2019, I was getting up every day at like 630. Uh, and that faded away uh, quite a bit where I was sometimes getting up at 8am, 9am sometimes if I was staying up too late and really trying to reset and build that, um, you know, habit back in. And a lot of people get sort of feel restricted by habits. But for myself, that's always actually been where freedom comes from. And so spending a lot of time to to build that out. And I like to be in my desk at 9am, and if you like to be, you know, working at a specific time, it makes a lot of sense to give yourself a little bit more time in the morning to do your practice, the meditation, the workout, the exercise. For me, that's some incense burning, a lot of important things that I really do cherish and want to continue to cherish here um, this year. And just wrapping up a couple last things, just increased transparency. Um, I did a lot, we did a lot last year with this Indie Hackers page. I hope this will open up. Did I link it right? Sometimes it's like, yeah. So, you know, shared a ton of updates, um, talked about our successes, our failures, where we're at as a company and everything. And that transparency has taken us, you know, it's, it's built connections, it's built trust and wanting to continue to do that. So one of the things that I've really focused on this year has been, um, how can I build out this dashboard that allows me to see where we are in terms of expenses? And then also how do we get to profitable? And at one point I was actually using the term break even, but that's not really the goal. The goal is that we actually are a profitable company and we're growing and we can sustain growth and help others. And, um, and by prioritizing these things, it's even why I've set up the Calendly this way and started to focus on some of these things because it's going to allow us to make the impact that we want. So I've tried to align the company growth with some of the personal goals that I have. And again, all shared in this in this post and I'll link this as well too. Um, and, and with the right focus, with the right support, uh, people are capable of so much and I believe that I'm capable of so much and so is our team. And, um, and really if we can set things right up now and in the start of the year, us, you, all of us can, can have an amazing year. YouTube lives. So this is what I'm doing right now. Uh, I am <laughs> I'm almost done this first one. Uh, and, uh, and we'll see how these, again, these, these change and modify over time. This was just to get it done to actually start this process. I know Vats will have some feedback for me. He'll tell me I talk too much. I talk too long, I talk too quick, too many topics, but, um, that's, that's part of it and part of figuring this out. And, you know, hopefully there's something good in here if you actually do end up checking this out. Um, but I, I really wanted to create this space. So 4.30 p.m. EST every single day. Right now I'm using OBS. I'll figure out a couple more things. Um, but I, I feel like it is important to carve out a space of creation for me. I don't necessarily like production of video. I don't like editing video, but I love the idea of live. I love that if people can come and join in, in mid conversations and I didn't even know that we can have these amazing conversations and that people know it's this moment. I always love, you know, watching Bill Maher or Saturday Night Live when you know uh, it's just like, it's just, they both pre-recorded, 
it feels live. It's supposed to be live, but this, you know, your closest possibly can be to sort of someone's real consciousness in that moment. And that's something that excites me, uh, both as a creator and then also as, uh, as a, as someone who's watching. So, um, I think I am getting the, um, the stream closing here. So I'm going to wrap up, but the, the last part is just nature. So, um, you know, I'm outside of the downtown core in Toronto. Uh, I'm doing my best to, you know, make this actually work. Um, and there was a big change this year, actually, you know, not being in, in nature, but, um, I'm prioritizing that in 2021. I'm going to find some different ways. We're out of the downtown core. We missed the water, but there's trees, there's nature nearby, and I'm going to take every chance that I can to actually get out. And so just lastly, um, you know, the question is, and I think my stream health is, is, is down here for a second, but you know, what are you optimizing and what are, what are you trying to do? So, uh, those are just a few things that are, are top of mind for me. I'm going to add more to this. Um, but I, I hope you did have a chance to reflect on this year, have a chance to, uh, take some time during these holidays and even though there has been a lot of difficulties, cherish the good things as well too. And and that's all um, I'm really trying to do at this time. I'm glad to have this space and opportunity to share with you. I think the stream went down right here at the end, but uh, and I know this was sort of a quick pace to go through a lot, but I'm gonna continue this, I'm gonna refine it, and I'm gonna spend more and more time just trying to create this wonderful space to actually share and learn together. Um, so thank you very much for this. It's been, uh, been wonderful and I appreciate anyone who's watching.